Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. I have been waiting to film this video for like over a year now, but I thought it was the perfect time to film my big review of laser eye surgery because the other day I had my one year annual review post surgery. So I'm in a good position to, you know, like review the whole process, the procedure, my satisfaction of what happened. Just tell you guys everything. I hope you enjoy this video and find it useful. Definitely a like it if you do. This is not me telling you to have laser eye surgery if you know you do wear glasses or contact lenses but i hope that this video kind of helps inform you and at the very least it just kind of like helps point you in the right direction to do maybe some more research or even just consider laser eye surgery because in a nutshell laser eye surgery has changed my vision entirely i am so so happy with the results i honestly didn't think i would get better vision than I had previously, which is what I've ended up with basically. So I'm gonna share everything. You are more than welcome to leave any other comments and questions down below. And if you are new around here, you can subscribe. Now, if you do watch my vlogs, then you'll probably already know this, but I do need to be completely transparent, obviously in this video. So I had it done at the London Vision Clinic, but this was a gifted procedure in exchange for content. And I know that I am therefore biased towards you know recommending this clinic but honestly the london vision clinic did an amazing job and if you are looking to get laser eye surgery definitely look into the london vision clinic as a potential option but um yeah we're gonna throw it back to uni so cambridge days because that is when i started wearing glasses up until that point my eyesight had been totally fine it was normal very healthy but bear in mind both of my parents wear glasses or contact lenses i must have been about 19 at this point but i started to realize that when i was in lectures and bear in mind my lectures were so big and i'd sit quite near the back to be honest with you the screen wasn't as clear as it used to be and i was kind of struggling to see it so that is what prompted me to go to get an eye test done and i basically realized that i was short-sighted or i had myopia so this is a little diagram of an eye it's a very complex structure and so i can't talk about everything but i will just mention a few parts that i will be referring to so if we start with the retina at the back of your eye that's a layer of photoreceptors they transduce the light energy into electrical energy that your brain can interpret and all of that information goes to the brain via the optic nerve and where the optic nerve leaves the eye that's your blind spot because you don't have photoreceptors in that region the color of your eye is determined by your iris so that is technically a muscle and it controls the size of your pupil so the pupil is the gap that allows light to enter you have your lens which focuses light onto the retina but actually most of the focusing of light is performed by the cornea which is a transparent layer in front of the eye so that is protective as i said it focuses the majority of light which is then further focused by the lens onto the retina at the back of your eye. It now makes sense to talk about why we actually need laser eye surgery. And it's a type of refractive surgery. So it's correcting refractive errors. So essentially where light isn't focused correctly onto the retina. And laser eye surgery specifically uses UV beams to like reshape the cornea. As I said, that does the majority of focusing. And there are quite a few different refractive errors that we can correct with laser eye surgery. So as I said, I was previously short Sighted, you can be long sighted. There are things called astigmatisms, which you've probably heard of as well. When you're short sighted, objects close to you are normal, they appear fine, but those at distance will appear blurry. And that's because light is focusing in front of the retina. Your eye basically has too much focusing power, so it's like refracting light and bending it too much. So it focuses in front, as I said. So in laser eye surgery, in that situation, you need to flatten the cornea. You then have hyperopia or long sightedness, and that's basically the opposite so objects up close appear blurry and that's because light is being focused behind the retina your eye doesn't have enough focusing power so you need to like steepen the cornea with laser eye surgery and that will then allow light to focus correctly you then have astigmatisms and this is where like you have asymmetric steepening of the lens or the cornea and so you have uneven focusing it means you have like multiple focal points in your eye so one might land on the retina but the other might land in front and that can mean the objects up close or far away can appear blurry and those are just three different corrections you have others like press myopia i think that's how you say it and that just describes like aging eyes so at that point when you're like in your 40s you'll start to struggle to see things up close that's just the natural and normal aging of eyes when you do get an eye test done minus numbers mean short-sighted and plus numbers mean long-sighted but basically both of my eyes 
were slightly short-sighted. I got my first pair of glasses. I was kind of excited, I'm not gonna lie. And I have had a few different pairs. I'll actually show you guys because I do still have them all. Wow, she has so many glasses still. Um, I should have really handed them in at the London Vision Clinic. But yeah, I have these ones. These are the Kylie Minogue glasses or Kylie Minogue. I don't know how you say her name. Oh my gosh, this is actually like blurry right now. My surgery clearly worked. The OGs. Oh wow. These are the ones with the blue light filter in that I had at a time. And then it also had a black one. We're just having a mini glasses haul in a laser eye surgery video, which is kind of strange. But yeah, I do need to do something with these glasses. But I got my glasses. You know, I wore them when I was in lectures. It did help. But I did notice that my eyesight continued to get slightly worse. My prescription therefore increased. I had to get new glasses and at the start of 2022, so last year, I also tried using contact lenses but i did not get on with contact lenses at all like they were just so annoying to put in i took them with me to thailand the first time i went and with sun cream on it stung my eyes they get everywhere i just couldn't get them in i just didn't get into the habit of putting them in every day and they just frustrated me so i didn't wear them moving then on to my actual surgery so as i said i went to the london vision clinic which is along holly street in london so central london my management 16 they came to me and they were like holly do you want to have late eye surgery because the clinic are looking to work with a content creator and i was just so open to it as i said like they gave me this procedure, but I was so excited to film this and document the process. And I was just so excited, like, to potentially get my vision back. I did some research for myself and quickly realized that this clinic was very reputable. And, you know, that was only reaffirmed when I went there. I started having my appointments, seeing my optometrist there, meeting and talking to my surgeon, who is Professor Reinstein. Honestly, that guy is so funny. He went to Cambridge as well, so we'd have, like, little chats about that. And he, like, wrote a textbook about laser eye surgery he helped invent the machine that was actually used to perform my surgery so this guy is you know he's top of his game he knows what he's doing i felt in such safe hands the whole time now all of this will be scattered like in my vlogs but in terms of like the rough timeline so i first had an appointment to like determine and just confirm my prescription and also then assess like my suitability for laser eye surgery most importantly now my mom is someone who was very skeptical at first because she was like you know laser eye surgery it can't be done on everyone like it can only be done on a very specific prescription but these days because the technology has advanced so much pretty much anyone can go and get laser eye surgery very rarely will someone be turned away because they can't have this surgery but in terms of myself i was determined as a suitable candidate and they also then determine which type of laser eye surgery you will have i had something called smile um it has a longer name and that stands for something which i'll put on the screen it's just so long but i had that in both my eyes so i had bilateral smile surgery in a nutshell we could say so you have different types of laser eye surgery but i'm just going to talk about two so lasik and smile because i had smile and then lasik is the most common procedure that is performed you use two different lasers so the first one creates like an incision that allows you to create a flap in your cornea so that is called the femtosecond laser that creates this corneal flap and then a second laser will come in called the excima laser that one then like reshapes the cornea so the curvature is changed and then the flap is put back down and the eye can heal that's lasik in like literally 20 seconds so smile is then the surgery as i said that i had i'm gonna show on the screen my surgery happening as i talk you guys through what's happening so you're more than welcome to skip i will put the timestamp on the screen if you are kind of squeamish but i think it's really really cool to see this smile is just a newer and improved version of lasik so it's like the keyhole version because the incision that you make is a lot smaller and that means that smile in comparison to lasik is like less invasive and it actually has fewer complications although both are safe very safe procedures so with smile you essentially just use a single laser and that is the femto second and it creates an incision but the incision this time is usually only about four millimeters but often it's smaller than that like mine was only two millimeters or something so that's your kind of keyhole and that laser also creates a lenticule at the same time so this is just a small disc shaped piece of corneal tissue that will be removed the surgeon so professor reinstein in my case will then go in 
go through that keyhole incision and remove the lenticule so that corneal tissue take it out and the cornea has been reshaped as i said there are other types of laser eye surgery and you have quite a few that are like surface level treatments so like lasek for example l-a-s-e-k not i-k that's where you basically remove the top layer of the cornea the epithelium and then you treat what's underneath so those have like longer healing times of about five to seven days because you're basically treating an exposed area you're not creating a flap like in lasik and you're not creating a tiny incision which is the case for smile the day before my surgery i went in for them to like confirm everything just talk through the whole procedure one more time and yeah, i was just like more excited than anything like i wasn't nervous at all i'm literally gonna have vision again like i'm genuinely gonna be able to see the world in 4k this is actually madness bear in mind i just come home for a week after traveling to then go back traveling again but like i had this week at home where i was gonna have laser eye surgery and my eyesight was gonna be transformed basically so quite chaotic but definitely one of the best decisions i've made you know in my adult life i am gonna leave that weekly vlog down below where i had laser eye surgery because i feel like if you are gonna have something like this done then that would be useful to watch but yeah on the 10th of august i had my surgery i went in really early to london with mum. we got up super early we arrived i had all of my pre-surgery checks had to put this really sexy hat on and yeah i basically went in for my surgery you are awake for this procedure that is the thing i was most worried about because i was like am i gonna feel anything but like what surprised me the most was firstly how quick this surgery is it is done in a matter of a minute maximum two minutes per eye and the second thing is that you do not feel anything at all they use local anesthetic so you will not feel anything i had no idea what was really going on like obviously there are machines around you and i had dr reinstein in there other people i had this really cute little teddy bear which i still have i actually want to show you guys that this is my little bunny rabbit that came with me um i just lay there like this holding the bunny rabbit obviously my eyes were open they are clamped open but yeah that is the crazy thing about laser eye surgery no pain completely painless for me and so so quick the way i described my surgery like what i was seeing it was as if i was lying underneath a bed sheet that was translucent and somebody was like opening and closing it it's kind of weird but when you watch the surgery back you can kind of see what they're doing now after the surgery they keep you in the clinic just to make sure you're okay they'll give you pain relief eye drops they'll give you artificial tears when you go outside you need to wear sunglasses to protect your eyes from the sun you need to protect your eyes from any dust any like small particles that might get in your eyes so you can't go on the london underground and that is why mom and i got home in a bolt taxi oh so you do a lot of it There's this no is where you for yeah me is no problem because I live in this side. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they tell you to keep your eyes closed as much as you can. Immediately after your surgery, you will notice an improvement in your eyesight. It will be slightly blurry and it will continue to go in and out of focus over the next like 24 hours. You know, the healing process is very quick, but like eventually you'll be like, oh my gosh, like I can see the world again. For me, especially because I was short-sighted so i couldn't see things at distance very clearly and then that evening i did have to sleep with these like goggles on so you don't like touch your eyes and i thought i was going to have to wear those for like a week now when you see what these look like i was not excited okay oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i basically went back to the london vision clinic the day after so i have a post-surgery checkup the following day and Professor Reinstein inspected my eyes. He was so, so happy with the results. The healing was so fast. And he told me that I didn't have to wear those glasses because everything was fine. This is the keyhole incision. And so then the here, other eye here, Here's the stain. Oh so yeah. The dye is kind of just being just picked up. That means it's sealed. Okay, nice. I was over the moon. I was also over the moon about my eyesight, the results and everything. And it was crazy that in like a matter of 24 hours, I went from having vision that was like, you know, defective we could say to having better than normal vision i then had another checkup after one month two months and then my year checkup i had so many follow-up appointments i've officially been discharged and my vision is 20 at 12.5 which is so good nothing has changed i'm so happy i basically have you guys 20 12.5 vision so you have the vision charts that you guys are probably familiar with 2020 is normal and then i read two lines below that what that basically means is that i can be 20 feet away from 
the vision chart and see it clearly but like an average person would need to be 12.5 feet away so my vision and my visual acuity is therefore better than normal if you then go the other way like above 2020 vision so 2025 if you have that visual acuity it means that you need to stand at you know 20 feet away and somebody else could stand at 25 feet away and see it clearly you know so you have to be closer than the average person or the person with normal vision at my final appointment you can still see the tiny incision in one of my eyes so that is where they made the incision for my smile surgery it is really tiny and like over time it probably will eventually disappear but going forwards i will have like regular eye checkups or eye tests every two years just to like look at the health of my eyes and i'll go to a local optometrist but as i said i am so so happy if you are looking for somewhere to have like laser eye surgery done i would definitely recommend like doing your research going there having an appointment to actually meet your surgeon to meet your optometrist ask them what technology they're using ask them how many initial tests you'll have like what you're going to discuss how many follow-up appointments you're going to have at the london vision clinic you know as i said i had these initial appointments i had loads of follow-up and for the 24 hours after my surgery as well i was given professor reinstein's number so i could call him if i had any issues which i thought was really good and my mum was so happy with that as well it meant that if we did have any issues I could contact them out of hours. So I thought it would be good and useful to talk about the pros and cons of laser eye surgery more broadly. I have mentioned some throughout this video, but I just wanted to like put it all together and I will also leave some links and resources down below if you guys are interested. But we'll start with the pros, the good things. So the first thing with LASIK and Smile is that they're super quick. They are also very accurate procedures and painless because you use anesthetic eye drops to like numb the eye. The healing process for both is also very, very quick. Like the incisions heal within a matter of hours, which is honestly crazy. Just interestingly to talk about LASIK versus Smile, as I said, Smile is the newer and improved version. But in terms of their safety and efficacy, they are very, very similar. So for example, a 2019 study which looked at just over 100 Chinese patients. For the Smile patients, their vision was at least 2020 at three years in 90% of patients. And that is slightly better than LASIK at like 85%. And then those who had vision that was 2016, or better in the smile patients was 63% and for LASIK it was 44 so again very similar there was no statistical difference for that one in fact and then regarding safety alone like smile and LASIK are both incredibly safe procedures like the risk of a complication is incredibly low if you're treated by like an expert surgeon using the best technology. Now some complications that have been reported are things like corneal ectasia, you could have loss of your best spectacle corrected visual acuity, so the BS CVA, so your vision is essentially worse than what you had with glasses. You can have like corneal infections and others, but as I said, the overall risk is super low. Laser eye surgery nowadays can treat like a huge range of refractive errors. And the last thing to say is that yes, your eyes will change naturally over time, but studies do show that laser eye surgery, the results are very long lasting. I'm not gonna say that they're permanent, but they are very long lasting. And if your eyes do start to change, you can have things like enhancement surgery, and if you go to a good surgeon they might even overcorrect you that is what happened to me so I was overcorrected and so that will allow for any changes in my eyesight over time any small and natural changes and I mean when you do reach the age of like your late 40s 50s you will have this natural decline in eyesight with age anyway so that is when people mostly start to notice like things up close appearing blurry but that is just normal natural and you can't really do anything about that. So those are the pros. I'm now going to talk about some of the cons, the potential disadvantages of laser eye surgery. So the first one is about pain because some patients will experience pain. Like after the surgery, when the anesthetic drops wear off, you might you know, feel something in your eyes. I didn't, but your clinic should give you pain relief eye drops and artificial tears anyway, just in case, you know, you do feel some discomfort as the eye starts to heal. And that is more likely to occur if you've had LASIK, which makes sense because the incision is a lot larger. Something that's quite interesting is like a fluctuating eye prescription. So if you're in your like teenage years or your early twenties, as I experienced, my eyesight did change. It got slightly worse. So I guess it is probably best to wait until your eye prescription like 
is stable but having spoken to like professor reinstein myself like he said that they can treat teenage and you know young patients they will just try and overcorrect that patient and take into account the changes that might occur so again as i said i was overcorrected now the last thing i haven't addressed so far is the cost of laser eye surgery and that's just because you know my procedure was gifted and the price is very very variable in london you're probably going to be paying a minimum of two grand per eye it's probably going to be more than two grand so two grand upwards two thousand pounds or upwards depending on your clinic where you go and also your prescription and therefore the surgery that you have the type of surgery so you know it's very hard to see how much it costs like you literally will just have to do some research and have appointments obviously there's a lot to consider the pros the cons you know it also depends on you personally if you want to choose to invest in laser eye surgery but considering that i've you know had a great experience this will last a really long time for me i won't have to pay for glasses contact lenses and you know contact lenses like cumulatively they have more of a risk than laser eye surgery itself which is a misconception often people often say um oh, i'm not doing laser i'm going to stick to my contacts but yeah that is that 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 doesn't under, that, that's not understanding statistics if you think contact lenses are safe which they are then you think laser eye surgery is safe too so i just thought this was worth talking a bit more about. I had this big conversation with Professor Reinstein about, you know, contact lenses versus laser eye surgery, the risks and stuff. Now, most people, they complain about dry eyes when they wear contact lenses, and a lot of people are just intolerant to contact lenses. For example, like when I wore contact lenses, my eyes were so dry, but that was because I'm intolerant to contact lenses. My eyes don't like them. You know, I was tested for dry eyes. I don't have dry eyes, which is the case for most people. You don't have dry eyes, you just have contact lens intolerance. And then on top of that intolerance with wearing contacts you carry a risk of developing infections inflaming your cornea because of the contact lens developing allergies like there are risks associated with contact lenses and if you wear daily contact lenses for example after three years of wearing those every single day they will carry the same risk as laser eye surgery so daily contact lenses and laser eye surgery like there's no difference in terms of their safety and the risk of complications that they carry but with monthly contact lenses for example they carry a higher risk than daily contact lenses so their risk is four times higher so that means after eight months of wearing those monthly contact lenses you will have the same risk as the risks carried by laser eye surgery. So as I said, this is often a misconception. People think that contacts are safer than laser eye surgery, but there are now quite a few different studies that look at, you know, contact lenses versus laser eye surgery. One study in particular looked at self-reported outcomes and after like three years, and compared to contact lenses, LASIK surgery had fewer accounts of, you know, self-reported like infections, ulcers and abrasions to the eye but that is ultimately my laser eye surgery experience as i said at the start definitely like this video if you found it useful you enjoyed watching leave any questions or comments down below subscribe if you are new of course the biggest shout out again to the london vision clinic i wouldn't be sitting here with like my bionic eyes um had i not gone to see them so yeah i cannot thank them enough this video wasn't sponsored at all i'm making this myself but yeah as always i will leave you guys with the bloopers i'll speak to you very soon in another video Bye guys. Excuse me, seat. Let me in. Yeah, yeah, I'm short sighted apparently. The hair looks flat. It's caught in my earring now. Here we are. Let's go. Let's go fix my eyes. Do people ever come in and read that bottom? Not too many people. Once every six months or so, I guess, <laughs> I'm going to read the bottom. Please. Is it press or please by opium? I never know how to say things correctly. Switch to the new. Presbyopia. Presbyopia. Ooh, presbyopia. Hmm, interesting. Ow! Ah! Ah! Ow! I'm ripping out my hair.